I'm Richard Clark. I record these talks every day as a way to deepen my inquiry. Listen each day and deepen your own practice. Welcome. I'm reviewing and commenting on the book Talks with Sri Ramana Maharshi. Today is from Talk 289, Part 2. Questioner. Having heard this truth, why does not one remain content? Maharshi, because samskaras have not been destroyed. Unless the samskaras cease to exist, there will always be doubt and confusion. All efforts are to be directed to destroying doubt and confusion. To do so, their roots must be cut. Their roots are the samskaras. These are rendered ineffective by practice as prescribed by the guru. The guru leaves it to the seeker to do this much so that he might himself find out that there is no ignorance. This truth mentioned is in the stage of hearing the truth, Shravana, that is not Durdha, firm. For making it unshaken, one has to practice reflection, Manana, and one-pointedness, Nidhyasana. These two processes scorch the seeds of Vasanas so that they are rendered ineffective. Some extraordinary persons get Durdhayana, unshaken knowledge, even on hearing the truth only once, because they are advanced seekers, whereas the raw seekers take longer to gain Durdhayana, unshaken knowledge. People ask, how did ignorance of Vidya arise at all? We have to say to them, ignorance never arose. It has no real being. That which is, is only Vidya, knowledge. Questioner, why then do I not realize it? Maharshi, because of the samskaras. However, find out who does not realize and what he does not realize. Then it will be clear that there is no avidya, ignorance. In this dialogue, the questioner poses a fundamental question. Why? After hearing the truth, don't you remain content? He asks, why don't people just rest content in the truth that they've heard? Instead, they just go on with their lives. Maharshi responds, talking about the role of samskaras, or deep-seated impressions, in perpetuating the mind's doubt in confusion. Maharshi explains that the lack of resting in the deep knowledge heard from the Guru stems from the persistence of samskaras within the mind. These samskaras are deeply ingrained patterns of conditioning. They are at the root of doubt and confusion. Samskaras are intimately connected with vasanas, the tendencies that motivate our actions seeking happiness from the world. Samskaras manifest 
as tendencies that cause the mind to look into the world to try to find its happiness and contentment. To attain lasting contentment, you must eradicate these samskaras and dissolve the tendency. Maharshi emphasizes that all efforts in spiritual practice are aimed at uprooting these samskaras and thereby eliminating doubt and confusion. As you engage in actions and have experiences, samskaras are formed and stored in the subconscious mind. These samskaras are at the base of vasanas, which then influence your thoughts, desires, and actions. Thus, vasanas are the active expressions of samskaras in the present moment, driving the cycle of karma and shaping your life's experiences. The guru or spiritual teacher provides guidance to you, directing you to practices that help dissolve samskaras and resolve vasanas. However, Maharshi stresses that ultimately it is your own responsibility to undertake this internal work and realize the truth for yourself. Through diligent practice as prescribed by the guru, you come to recognize the inherent absence of ignorance. The guru is a voice outside the limits of your ego that can point the way. Guru tells you that what you seek is within yourself, as yourself. The voice can be from a physical guru or his recorded words or present in the lessons of the natural world or found deep within yourself. Maharshi delineates three steps in the journey towards un unshaken knowledge, hearing the truth or reading the truth Shravana, Reflection, Manana, and One-Pointed Meditation, Nidhyasana. While hearing the truth starts the process, it is through reflection and sustained meditation that the seeds of vasanas are scorched, rendering them ineffective. This three-step process takes what is read or heard, looks deeply into it with the mind, and then through the meditation makes it your experience. Maharshi acknowledges that some advanced seekers may attain unshaken knowledge upon hearing the truth just once while others require prolonged practice. The difference lies in the readiness and receptivity of the seeker. I think the difference is also in the intensity of their spiritual practice. My teacher says that what is most important is the desire for liberation. Addressing the question of how ignorance of vidya arises, Maharshi asserts that ignorance itself is illusory, with no real existence. He redirects the questioner to inquire into the nature of the one who perceives ignorance to reveal the inherent truth of pure knowledge, vidya. 
Maharshi's teachings emphasize the importance of self-inquiry and diligent practice in transcending samskaras, resolving vasanas, and realizing the innate truth of existence and of yourself. Through self-investigation, inquiry, and unwavering commitment to spiritual practice, you can attain lasting contentment and unshaken knowledge of the self. So inquire, know yourself, and be always free and at peace. These videos bring Ramana's teachings into your direct experience. Click subscribe to see more. Click thumbs up to like and send questions and start a dialogue with the comments.